You are once again welcome to Jan Ivan's Home Tuition. This is a platform where learners make good use of their time. I'm very grateful for you having you once again. Learners, you're humbly welcome. In today's lesson, Integrated Science, GHS, we'll be talking about machines. Please, take a look at the tools below. Are they familiar to you? Are they machines? Probably you could see the seashore, the hand pop, pair of scissors, crowbar, the claw hammer, then the pliers. In your rectangular square over there, you could also see that of the shovel, a car, rear and axle, the saw, pair of tongs. Probably you see the axe to as well, and also the wheelbarrow, so on and so forth. Let me ask once again, are they machines? If it does it, then let me ask you, what is a machine? A machine is any device that helps or allows us to do work easily or faster. Or, it can be defined as a device that allows a small force at one point, that's the effort, to overcome a large force, that's the load, at another point. Examples of machines. We have the wheelbarrow, the cutlass, battery opener, the pulleys, ladder, pair of scissors, and then computer. So think of any device that I've mentioned so far that you think it can help us for we to do work easily and also faster as well. So take a look at the tools that we, we talked about. We mentioned so many tools over there. When you use them in working, do they help you for you to accomplish your work within a short period of time? You have been asked to carry a bag of rice from one point to another. When you carry such bag of rice or cement bag, what happens? It takes a longer time or a long period of time. But probably if your wheelbarrow is there, maybe you carry it and place it inside within a short period of time. My brother, my sister, my learners, you will finish or accomplish within a short period of time. If that's the issue, then let's go to the types of machines. We have two types of machine, namely, one, we have the simple machines. And then two, we have the complex machines. What are simple machines? They are machines that are easily made. Example, we have the wheelbarrow once again, the cutlass, bottle opener, the pulleys, the leather, a pair of scissors, a pair of turns, the crowbar, and also the beam balance. Let's got the second type of machine. That's the complex machine. They are machines made of two or more simple machines. Example is the computer, sewing machine, tractor, combined harvester, microwave, washing machine, the bulldozer, the car, and the mobile phones. So before we will get this complex machine, if not nothing at all, we can find two or more of the simple machines in these devices. Okay. Take a look at the machines below. Are they familiar to you? The first one, the inclined plane. The wedge. The lever. Rear and axle. Screw. And also the pulley. What are they at all? Learners, they are the groups or the types of simple machines. I'm taking it once again. They are the groups or the types of simple machines. Remember, we said we have two types of machines. There's a simple machine and a complex machine. But for this time, this picture you see there are the types of simple machines or groups of simple machines. Now let us, let's start. We'll pick them one after the other and then we'll describe them. What's a lever? A lever is a simple machine of a rigid bar 
that rotates around a fixed point called pivot or fulcrum. Or a lever is a simple machine made up of a load, effort, and pivot. So think of any rigid bar. It is at a fixed point. It always rotates. And it doesn't move from one point to another. That one tells us that it is what a lever. There are three main parts of a lever, which is the simple machine. Namely, we have the effort, the load, and also the pivot or the fulcrum. So the first order of the lever, see where the fulcrum or the pivot is. It is at the middle. There is a bar. And this bar is where at all time rotation will take place. Yes. And this time around, you realize that there is a human or a toy at one end of the bar where the force is going to be applied called effort. And this effort there, it needs to what, overcome or used to lift another large force, which is called a load. That's why we said a simple machine. The second definition for a simple machine is a device used to overcome, which is used by a small force, which is called the effort to overcome a larger force called the load. So this is a practical picture of a lever. So you could see that the three parts of this lever is there. The fulcrum or the pivot at the middle. As I right hand side, we could see the effort. The left hand side, we should also see the load too as well. Now let's proceed. Let's go the types of lever. We have the first class lever, the second class lever, and also the third class lever. So we'll pick them one after the other, and then we'll talk about them. What's a first class lever? It is a lever in which the pivot is between the effort and the load. Now we use the abbreviation EPL or LP, meaning the pivot or the fulcrum at all times is between the effort and the load. Examples are a pair of scissors, crowbar, claw hammer, the plier, beam balance, and also the seashore. Let's take a look at the picture over there. You realize that the same diagram that we did talk about under the lever, the pivot or the fulcrum is in the middle, effort apply at the right hand side, and also the load at the other side. Okay. <clears throat> Let's go to the other end to as well. That's the second class lever. It is a lever in which the load is between the effort and the pivot. We use the vibration P L E O E L P, meaning the load is between the effort and the pivot. We have the wheelbarrow, the party opener, we have that of the nutcracker and all doors or gates and also the stapler let's take one of the examples there for you to understand it well when we take the wheelbarrow you realize that there's one unique thing about it you will tell me if you have been asked to carry a bag of rice or a bag of cement you realize that you put the bag of rice or the bag of cement in the pan of the wheelbarrow or the basin then you stand at one end holding the handles that's where the effort is being applied when you get to where the ties where the wells are you will see probably a screw holding the tie and also the wells of it at the end they will say that it is the second class lever because the load which is the bag of rice is between the effort and also the pivot third class lever is a lever in which the effort is between the load and the pivot we use the abbreviation l e p o p e l example we have the cutlass the hoe we have the fishing rod pair of sugar tons table knife forceps chopstick and also the human arm Let's take a look of one of the examples there for you to understand. When we take the hole, 
you realize that whilst we are weeding or digging the ground, at where the edges, that's the blade of the hole, the load will be there. So let's take it that we are weeding. The rubbish is there or the weeds there becomes our load. The fulcrum, the bar in which we hold is the fulcrum. Now where we mount our hand, where the effort is applied, is in the middle. You don't tell me you hold the edge of the hole, no. But in the middle of what? The hole. So let's take note of it. Let's take the diagram once again. Let's talk about it. That's the second class lever. The load is in the middle. The effort then in the fulcrum has already mentioned. The third class lever, we also see the fulcrum, the load in the middle or the middle. And also the load at one end of it. So the effort rather is in the middle, the load at one end, and also the fulcrum at the other side as well. Let's proceed, learners. Since we are done with the levers, we are going to the other group as well, the inclined planes. What's an inclined plane? It's a simple machine of sloppy board to roll a heavy load with a less force. The surface of an inclined plane should be flat and slanted so when we come to ghana you realize that we have these cars or vehicles that at all time distribute these alcoholic beverages the casapreco the alumu and all stuff you realize that when they get to a the path or the place that we they need to dispense or deliver these alcoholic beverages their cars there has a metallic slope it is an inclined plane for them to be easily what bring out these drinks they don't need to go in to carry it using all their strength so inclined plane always makes work very easy so in a picture over there you could see this man um rolling a heavy object whether into the vehicle or into a uh, at a height or descending it down any of them is accepted let's go to the gs this is where probably your friends, that's a boy, who likes to ride bicycle, they'll tell you they've changed the gears, the gears for them. They call it gears, but the right word is gears. What do they do? They are machines or simple machines that help to transmit force or direction to change the direction of a force for easy work done. It is a wheel which has stage around its rim, so you could see it. And also there is an arrow indicating the direction of this GS at which it will help to change the direction. When we check the smaller one too as well, talking about the picture, you realize that that one to the direction is also different to as well. So let's take note of it. The next group is what we call the screws. Wheel and axle. So let's take the screws first. It's a simple machine made from another simple machine. It is used to hold or join two objects together. It has ranges on it which makes it look different from nails. So when you see this somewhere, don't tell me they are nails. No. These nails and um, screws are different. Yes, it has ranges. It has a spiral um, shapes around the screw. It's what we call the ranges. But nails do not have it. It is easily constructed. Why? That's why we are saying it's a simple machine or a type of simple machine. Let's go to the wheel and axle. It's also a simple machine with wheels that turns around the rod. The wheel and axle are used in the form of where rope is tied around a rod, leaving it free effort to apply. So let's take a picture once again. Where the P and the arrow points down is what we call the wells. The part labeled A is what we call the rod. You could see the rope is being tied at the rod towards that of the wells. So when we go to spin or turn the wells, the rope there also reduces. When we turn to the other side, it also increases for me to be able to fetch our water. When you visit these rural areas, you realize that that's the villages they like to use this a lot so we are in axel is that let's move to the next one now we are done with the groups of the simple machines probably you could do a own research on the police and also their work to as well 
Now let's go to work, energy, and power. What is work? Work is said to be done when a body moves through a distance as a direction of the force acting on the body. Or, mathematically, you can see that W is equal to F times D, where F is force and D is distance. What is energy? Energy is the capacity or ability to do work. Power is the rate at which work is done. The SI unit is what? Or, mathematically, P is equal to W over T. So, at all time for power, there is respect to time. The work was done, but at which time? Let's take note of it. Now, let's check out working samples on work, energy, and power. An interesting one. Bang. Let's go. Now, let's take the first one. A force of 10 newton was applied on a load through a distance of 4 meters. Calculate the work done. Procedure. We said W is equal to F times Z. That's force time distance. Uh, F is equal to 100 newton distance 4 meters. So therefore, we go to multiply them. So we get 400 joules or 400 newton meter. Excellent. Let's go to the second one. Calculate the force if the work done in lifting a load through a distance of 8 meters was 100 joules. Still, we quote our formula. Work done is equal to F times D. Where F is equal to question mark. D is equal to 8 meters. Our work done is 100 joules. Now, what's our formula once again? Our formula for force is going to be work done over the distance. To be precise. So, we are going to get our work done was what? 100 joules. So, 100 joules over 8 meters. Our answer is going to be 12.5 newton. Newton. Take note. Force is always Newton. That's the SI unit, to be precise. Question number three. A stone was weighed 5 newton, was true through a distance of 5 centimeters. Calculate the work done. Still, our procedure work done is equal to force times D. That's distance. F is equal to 100 newton. Distance is 5, sorry, 50 centimeters. But here, we can't just go and multiply. It's only like the first question. Here, the SI unit, which is accepted, is meters. So, therefore, learners, we need to change from centimeters to meters. So, how do we do this? It's going to be 100 centimeters is equal to 1 meter. If that's the issue, then 50 centimeters go to what? We don't know. Question mark. So, it's going to be 50 centimeters times 1 meter or 100 centimeters. And learners, you know why we did this. If less, more divide. So, let's take note, let's take note of it. So, our distance now is going to be 0 0.5 meters. Now, our work done is going to be 100 newton times 0 0.5 meters. Our work done is 5 joules or 5 newton per meter. Correctly. Question number 4. Flight move through a distance within 5 seconds. If the work done of the flight is 900 newton, find the work. Oh, sorry, find the power. So here we have our work done. That's 900 newton. Our time, 5 seconds. The formula for power is work done respect to time, T. So we're going to get 900 newton all on 5 seconds. Our power is going to be 180 W. That's what? The fifth one. We now use the force of 20 newton to lift a load through a distance of 6 meter in 20 seconds. Calculate the power of Renel used. Or the power Renel used. Procedure. So P is equal to W over T. Where F is equal to 20 Newton. T is equal to 5 seconds. Now our distance is 6 meters. Remember in this question we don't have our work done straightforward. So we need to calculate for our work done. That's our force times D distance. So 20 times 6 we get 180 joules. That's our work done. Now let's solve for power since we have our work done now. It's going to be W over T. That's respect to time. So our P is equal to be 180 joules or on 5 seconds. Our P is equal to 36 watts. Then yes, I'm sure this calculation aspect has really, really helped us a lot for me to know how to calculate for power and also work as well to respect to energy. 
Let's proceed to the next one. The next one is mechanical advantage and velocity ratio. VR. Ne MA. What's mechanical advantage? Is the ratio of load to the effort. Mathematically, we can see that mechanical advantage is equal to load over effort. Let's go some working sample. A force of 50 newton was used to overcome a load of 100 newton. Calculate the mechanical advantage of the machine. So procedure. We still go. Mechanical advantage is equal to load over the effort. In this question, we have our load to be 100 newton. Our force is 50 newton. So N cancels N. That's newton will cancel newton. 50 goes to itself. 1 goes to 100 two times. So we have mechanical advantage is equal to 2. You can realize that there is something which is fishy over there, which means there is no SI unit. We'll get to understand it later. Now, velocity ratio, what is it? It's the ratio of the effort to the load. Or in other words, it's the ratio of the distance moved by the effort to the distance moved by the load. Mathematically, we see that VR, that velocity ratio, is equal to distance moved by the effort or distance moved by the load. Let's cut some working hours. The load of 1.5 newton moved through a distance with a force of 3 newton. Calculate the velocity ratio. The procedure is going to be the velocity ratio is equal to distance moved by the effort over distance moved by load. So in our force over here, that's the force distance. In other words, the effort distance is going to be 3. And then the load distance is going to be 1.5. Uh, so our answer here is going to be 2. So let's take note of this. You realize that velocity ratio 2, there's something fishy. There's no SI unit. So that's what we're coming to say that both MA, that's mechanical advantage, and VR, velocity ratio, do not have SI units. After calculation, just write the value, not unit or symbol. Just write the value and go away. Don't add any unit or symbol to it. Okay, let's proceed. The next thing I want to talk about is efficiency. Efficiency. Probably you go to buy a machine, realize that for, for the first, or let's say some months that you start using the machine, you see the machine works well. Yes, the rates, it's increasing and everything. It will get to a time, it starts to reduce on in which how it used to work at first. Why? It is called efficiency. So what's efficiency? Efficiency is the ratio of the useful work done to the total work put expressed as percentage. Efficiency is the ratio or efficiency is the ratio of the mechanical advantage to the velocity ratio expressed as percentage. Mathematically, we say work done over work input times 100% or mechanical advantage over velocity ratio times 100%. Now, efficiency is not equal to 100%. Why are we saying this? Because some of the work input is used to overcome gravitational force, inertia, gravitational force, even frictional force, and convert to other forms of energy. How do we find for work output? When the work input there has been affected with friction, it's going to be work input minus friction. How do you also find for work input? We're going to say that work output plus friction. So wherever there's work output, it tells you that this is the time we need to, at all time, add it to friction for it to get our work input. Let's take note of it. The next one. Okay, so working hours, let's calculate for efficiency. For example, if a machine is capable of doing 35 joules or work when... 50 joules is put into the machine, calculate the efficiency of the machine. So we have our work output there, work input there. This time around, it doesn't affect, or friction does not affect it. So it's going to be work output on work input times 100%. Efficiency, so let's take note of this. Our work output there is the 35 joules. It's capable of doing, take note of it. Then, when 50 joules is put into the machine, that's the work input. 
So at the end, the wedding of this becomes 70%. So let's conclude. 70% of the work put in the machine goes into doing work that the machine was designed for. 70, 100 minus 70, you get 30. So which means that the other 30% of the input work goes into other forms of energy, which means convert to other forms of energy. Probably who also, gravitational force was also um, affected frictional and inertia force to as well. So let's take note of it. At all time, efficiency is not equal to 100%, as already mentioned. Let's take note of it. Okay. Good. Let's go to tools and their uses. Tools and their uses. Pardon us for the slides moving up and down. Now, tools and their uses. One, we have pliers. What do we use for, for cutting wires? Spanners for tightening and loosening bows and nuts. Tester for determining the flow of current. Hammer for breaking objects apart or for heating nails into woods. Drilling machine for creating holes or drilling. The saw for cutting solid materials. Screwdriver for turning screws or loosening also tightening screws as well. Alanis. This is where we bring our lesson to an end. And once again, Geneva's home tuition. Learners, before we go, what have we learned today? Let's summarize everything. We said a machine is any device that helps or allows us to do work easily and faster. Examples of this machine you have the wheelbarrow, the cutlass, the bottle opener, and the hammer, etc. We said we have two types of machine, namely the simple machine and also the complex machine. The simple machines are easily constructed. Complex machine are machine made of two or more simple machines. We also say the wedge. The GS, the pulleys, cues, wheel and axle, the lever, they are all groups or types of simple machine. We say lever is a rigid bar that rotates around a fixed point called the pivot or the fulcrum. So you have three types of lever, the first class, second and third class. The sufficiency of a machine is the useful work done to the total work put expressed as percentage. Yes. And at all times we say the main reason why efficiency is not equal to 100% is that Part of the work input is used to overcome friction, gravitational force, inertia, and other. It's also used to convert to other forms of energy. Lennis, thank you very much. But don't forget, there is a question that we need to try our hands on. Thank you very much once again.